Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Next Shot, where I'm joined with my co-host, Luke Lukasic. Luke, how's it going, buddy? Hey, Roger. How's it going over there? It's going great up here. Good, good. Man, it's going good here. You know, weather's been a little chilly, but uh, still good weather for taking pictures. What do you think? Yes, yes. Uh, the, I'll take the, the cool over the hot Georgia heat any day. I agree. Uh, today, we are going to cover what me and Luke have been working on for the past couple of weeks with uh, HDR, black and white conversion edits. So, Luke, I know you love black and white. I do love black and white. So, to put this grunge HDR and uh, make it this cool image, you know, almost uh, spooky, I guess you could say, with about anything we take. Uh, how did you enjoy doing that? Well, you know, I, HDR isn't normally my thing. Uh, it's, it's not something I, I go towards. So it was kind of a good experiment. And it was fun to, to convert them into some HDR images. Right. I mean, even using, I guess, what software did you use? Uh, I used a little bit of um, uh, Lightroom as well as I actually tweaked one or two of them in your uh, Snapseed. Very good. Did you notice in Snapseed, that's where I, I did most of my edits, that you can save that look? Did you try that? No. Okay, so uh, for everybody out there listening, if you don't have Snapseed, please get it. It is a free app. It does so much for edits. And if you have a style, like Luke has a specific style, uh, I have a specific style, and I want to do, uh, like we talked about, the HDR black and white. Once you get that image to where you want it and you export it before you click off of that screen go down to the very bottom under your looks it's the bottom left hand side scroll all the way to the right once you get to the right there's a plus sign click that plus sign it'll ask so, you to name that look almost look like you're saving as a preset it is a preset and it stays in the memory yeah see it'll say save this look and if you name that look, if you name it like HDR black and white, it'll actually save a little thumbnail of that edit that you just did and put the title underneath there as well. All right. So what's cool, though, is that the next image you open up, yes, you just click one button. So you can still tweak it once you do that look. So that's it will, cool, right? Yeah. Well, what's cool is that it keeps your edits all the way at the end. But when you click it, you can go into it, and it'll show you how many steps you took to get to that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, yes. So I, I think that's cool. I like that. It is cool. Uh, and then also you can go into uh, more detail, and let's say you put a vignette on the edit prior to, and you want to take it off. There's ways to go in there and take that vignette completely off or edit it uh, in case you went more to the left or more to the right. So. Mm. Uh, getting into advanced stuff like that on Snapseed is uh, there's all kind of YouTube tutorials on how to do Snapseed. It's not just a uh, open up and change brightness. I mean, it really gets into detail, almost like a Lightroom or a Photoshop would, but you got to know which buttons to push, you know? Yeah. All right. So once we get done with our HDR slideshow, we're going to cover uh, extension tubes that Luke went out and purchased from our uh, previous guest, Robert Goody, uh, had mentioned uh, that Luke may want to try out. So Luke, you'll tell us a little bit about that later, right? Definitely, definitely. And then at the very end, uh, we'll discuss something that I did this past Sunday uh, to try to generate some sales for a, uh, a client of mine, which I thought was pretty cool. Excited. <laughs> All right, so let's jump right into the slideshow, Luke. Let's go. Okay, Luke, so here we are in our... Uh, HDR black and white editing. Let's do it. All right. So first image. Uh, so this is Washington, D.C. Uh, at the Lincoln Memorial. We were there, I don't know, maybe five, six years ago. Uh, it was just, it's it's impressive uh, being there in person. Just seeing it in an image is one thing, but being there and seeing how big it is. Um, turning into the HDR black, black and white was, it definitely made the image pop a lot more. Blacking out that background making everything on him bright white and kind of pop off. Uh, it's more intimidating this way than it was just the normal image I had edited. I agree. You know, I've seen a lot of pictures of this memorial, but you know, I don't, 
I don't know. It's just, it's different when you have that high contrast, you know? He, he's looming. He's kind of scary looking now. This is true. You know? This is true. Very good image though. I like that. I've never been, but you know, it's, it's one of the shots I would like to go take, of course. So maybe that's a road trip for us. What do you think? There you go. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Next two images. Uh, that's my infamous garlic image uh, from our food show. Uh, just turning it all the way black and white and giving it that, that HDR. It's almost like it looks metallic. It's shiny, you know? Um, and then the seagull on the other side, that's just a, a gull that was at Tybee Island one day. Um, the image is way bigger. I just zoomed in on him. Uh, but turning HDR really made, made that water in the sand almost glassy. Uh, where in the regular image, just, it's there, just not as, as reflective as the HDR makes it pop. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, again, going back to the, the garlic, that's one of my favorite pictures that you shot for the food photography episode. But uh, for those of you that did not see it, uh, I would go, recommend going back and watching that episode because Luke did a fantastic job with his chips and salsa. So, uh, again, kudos. That is that is definitely a picture that you should have hanging in a restaurant or something. So it's hanging in the house. Does that count? <laughs> it does count. <laughs> Uh, the, the seagull, of course, you, you know, a lot of people take pictures of seagulls and, you know, black and white is, is really the way it needs to be portrayed. I mean, I don't, the color, you know, sometimes you'll see a little difference in the, uh, the white on them. It'll be more like a yellow mm -hmm. uh, converting it to black and white. I think that makes the seagulls look really um, more interesting, I should say. Okay. The next two here. Uh, so the image on the left, that is a uh, gravestone here in, in Savannah. Um, it, it's, I found her, she's at the very end of the back road. Uh, she's just the, by far the best headstone uh, in, in the cemetery. I, I, lo I, I can go sit there for hours and just relax with it. It's, it's, it's peaceful. Um, and the one on the right is from uh, St. Augustine. There's a little cemetery there that I took Um when they're colored uh again it's just black and white by far you know exceeds my expectations on some images but uh the hdr really popped off that white and darkened those blacks and both images um i, I actually like them more now than i did when they were just black and white prior to this yeah i think that hdr does add another dimension to it i mean like you say converting color to black and white is one thing, but when you take it another step further and what we're trying to push is that HDR feel uh, for, for those of you out there viewing this, if you don't know what HDR is, it's the high dynamic range. It takes the brightest of the brights, the darkest of the darks and then the mid tones and it combines all three together. So you get all the detail that's in the image. I mean, honestly, if you look at the, uh, I guess we're calling this an angel on the left mm -hmm. here. Uh, if you look underneath the tombstone there where the shadow is, I mean, and the foot, you can see the foot. Typically, it would be too dark for for you to see those things. And what it does is it pulls those tones out. And it also takes that sky. If you look at the sky, it toned it down. So that's what HDR does. It, it gets you in the center of, of your highs, lows, and your mids. I mean, it just brings everything together and just makes it look so much better. Uh, but to me, I mean, th both of these images, um, they're, they're kind of morbid if you think about graveyards and, but it's peaceful. You know what I'm saying? It does have a peaceful feel. So how, how big do you think the angel is? Is it almost life size? She is life size. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So that's definitely something you guys would want to check out. You know, even if you think it's morbid, even if you think, Hey, I don't want to go to a graveyard or a gravesite and, and take images like this. I mean, that's, that's your preference, but you'll never get images like this to share with other people that never get to go to those uh, grave sites, but uh, very good job, Luke. Uh, those Thank you. Really Thank good. You. Okay. The next two. Uh, so the one on the left is um, from a beach over in Jekyll Island. It's called driftwood beach. Uh, it's just the whole beach is just littered and covered with driftwood. Um, and it's just, I zoomed in and it, it's weird when I took the picture, I just took it cause I was kind of cool looking but yeah. looking at it now, I almost see like a horse head, you know, like yes. the eyeball and the, and the nostril. And just it's like a flaming horse head. Again, you can find a billion things in all the images. But yeah, after, I, after I did it, I was like, damn, I kind of like that. <laughs> to me, it's a dragon. You can see yeah. the, almost the, the fiery feel and 
and the eye is just so cool. Like you say, you start looking at it more, you start seeing more detail, you know? Definitely. Saying so again, it, I, I didn't see it until I really turned it black and white and popped off all the, all the, get, got the desaturated everything. Yeah. Um, and then the one on the right is from Charleston from the USS Constitution. Uh, you've been there before. Yes. yes. Um, it's just, just a big old engine. Uh, again, I had that picture for years and just sat there in, in my collection doing nothing. But when we had this project, I was like, you know what? I'll pull that one out. And it, it worked. You know what I'm saying? It definitely and, and, enhanced it. It does. And that's what I like about doing these projects. You know, it was just a, a thought, you know, it's, it's almost like you do an edit and you think, well, I'm going to send this to Luke and see what he can do with some of his images and see if we can kind of show everybody just an idea that we had uh, converting some of our original images into this uh, black HDR black and white and how well it works, you know? Definitely. Okay. So Luke, what is this? This is my stuffed beaver from uh, Washington, D.C. at one of the museums. Um, the... the Originally, it was in color. Uh, it, it was dark oranges and browns, uh, but I just tried it in the HDR black and white, and it looks just as good. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's one of my only color shots that I really like in color. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, what's cool is that you know, when we go to these museums or you go to these places, even to the zoo, and you start taking pictures of animals, you know, you, you see all those in magazines and stuff, but what's cool is that the detail is there. You mm -hmm. probably used a zoom lens, of course, cause the background's a little blurred, but yeah, uh, but getting that detail in the fur, I mean, you can count every single hair almost in, in this picture, which is pretty cool. So, but it looks real. It looks like you, you it caught does. it as it popped up, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> good job. And, and if you didn't know it was a stuffed beaver, of course, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you couldn't tell the difference. No, no, no. Uh, and this one is just a seagull feather from the beach again at Tybee. Uh, it just, it was th that black sand uh, kind of made it pop off when I saw it. Uh, I was like, you know, uh, what will hurt to take a picture? Again, another picture that I took, it was just sitting there in the archive, just kind of hanging out for the right moment. That's true. And we all have pictures like that, you know? So again, another challenge for everybody out there watching the show, pull some old pictures, you know, convert them to the black and white HDR. Let us see those pictures, you know, put them in the comments, you know, send it, send it to our, our website and we can cover some of those in the show. But uh, we just want to see what you guys are doing out there, you know, and if it's something that we're teaching you that you've never done before, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to bring those old images back to life. Wouldn't you agree, Luke? Oh, hundred percent. You know, and it, it almost like you, you're, you're taking a second, third, fourth, 12th look at them. You know what I'm saying, uh, because again, when you change the color, you edit it, when you turn it black and white, when you just play with the, 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 the bars, you know, you can get a whole different picture than what you thought you had. This is true. All right. So these are some of my edits. We'll go th through these really quick because, uh, you know, I tend to ramble. But, uh, you know, this this was an old, I guess it's like a, I don't know if you're going to consider this a deer stand or if it's a clubhouse. Who knows? I mean, I don't, I don't even know how old this thing was, but they were doing some construction in the, the area, taking down some trees, I guess, you know, doing some grading. And I, as soon as I drove past this driveway, it was on my right. So I, this thing had to have been, you know, a football field away, you know, at least a hundred yeah. yards. So I got out the zoom lens, the 200 millimeter shot down into the woods. And of course in color, it didn't look great. So I did the HDR conversion with the black and white and it's just different. It almost looks spooky, you know? And if you look it at did. it from, yeah. from a squint, it looks like a face, you know what I'm saying? Like two eyes and a mouth. It's just it it's does. weird. It's creepy. It's almost a, like a tree person, you know, but uh, that, that one was pretty neat, you know, turning it to black and white. And then these three images, uh, the stairway to heaven or whatever you want to call it, stairway to the, the telephone pole, <laughs> but I like the, the, the way the steps look that, like they've been hand carved, mm -hmm. which I thought was pretty cool and how they actually uh, fade off into the distance. Uh, the, the middle one is ice. When we had our big ice and snow a couple of weeks ago, I went out and was looking for some small things to shoot. Uh, and this one of course is just like a puddle of water 
with the ice over the top of it. And it had the pine needles and everything froze underneath, which I thought was pretty cool. And then the harsh sun of the one on the right, is just a, a pine tree. Um, you know, all the pine needles just, just make a design once you start looking at stuff like that. All right. And water drops, Luke. I can't say enough about water drops. You and your water drops. Because I, I take a lot of pictures of vehicles. And mm-hmm. if you get out early morning, when the dew is set, right after a rain, uh, these cars beat up the water into this amazing, I don't even know what, you, it, it looks like a field of rocks, you know? <laughs> it's just, it's cool to me. I, I really love water drops. And if you can get the focus just right, and, and believe it or not, I think this one was with my iPhone too, but, uh, you know, if we if we get the right angle and the right lighting and of course the conversion to black and white on this, I think it looks pretty cool. What do you think? Luke? I, I love it. Um, it's, it's just like, it's the same image, you know, a hundred times, just, just different angles, you know, it's, it's cool. Yeah. And yeah, you know, of course any sunlight or any lights that you have coming through, you're going to make a big difference in it too. So, and of course the, the spooky old house, you know, I tell you what, I like shooting these weird perspective shots, and this was shot with uh, an 18 millimeter, 18 to 55, I believe, on my Canon. Uh, I just got down kind of midway, shot up, and got the uh, the perspective. Of course, the house is almost falling down, but uh, when you take little trips into the woods and you run across stuff like this, I've got a couple more images on here. I'll show you, uh, but there's just so much to be said about an old house that that's almost falling down, you know, yeah. Other than it's, it's, it's eerie. It's creepy. It's unsettling. You know, I, I get it. It's almost like visiting a house that you lived in, you know, 40 years ago and mm-hmm. it's just barely standing and all those memories, you can, you can see it, you can feel it, you know? So this is one of the rooms in that house. So this is what I shot. I shot it in color. I exposed for the window. That way you can see a little bit of the details in the trees. And then also, bringing out the details because the details got lost mm-hmm. or exposing for stuff like that. So this is what I turned it into. So what do you I think? Like that. It's a, uh, it's definitely a completely different image with the writing on the wall now. Yes. And that weird, creepy covered ghost corner. <laughs> and, you know, like I say, you know, you never know what was there or who was in this house, but it just, it doesn't give it a, an eerie feeling, you know? So these shots here, again, just some that I picked out. The one on the right, of course, is the same house. Uh, the one in the middle is at the house, but it's toward an outbuilding that's off to the side. And it's like a big engine. I don't even know if it's a tractor engine or what, but uh, you know, seeing stuff like that that's been sitting there for years and the tree limbs and the leaves, I mean, it just it, it's pretty cool, I think. You know, that's the stuff I look for when I go. It's it's history, you know. What I'm saying it, it's yeah, it's not the normal stuff that you see on the side of the road driving down the back. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's 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 history. It's stuff you gotta you gotta go out and look for, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, this one on the left. I know I went backwards, but this one on the left is um, it's a gated trail, I guess, for like a power company or something. Uh, you'll see in the next image where they've got it locked, but I, I went past, not past the gate. Of course I didn't break the law, but I went up to the gate and shot with a wider angle so that I can get over, you know, the view over the gate. And then I toned it down with that uh, HDR and almost converted the sky. It's a bright daylight, but I almost converted it to nighttime, which I thought was pretty cool. So this is the same shot, just pulled back a little bit, and I focused on the gate itself with the locks. So you got one, two, three, four locks on there instead of having a chain, of course, you know. Uh, everybody has a different lock to get in, I guess, where it says, you know, Verizon, this company, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, you know, four different people can get in the same gate without having, you know, one lock with four keys. Does that make sense? That is ingenious. It is ingenious. So, you know, basically – um you know the just the detail and the depth of field i thought you know would look good with this uh, black and white conversion so and of course the antique store versus storks and everything else that we've seen in this image <laughs> so this is actually uh in between uh belmont and stanley i believe 
uh, it's just just a little. I don't even know what to call it. You know, it's, I know it's an antique store, but you know. So, what are the, some of the things that that stick out to you, Luke? The 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 sheer oddity of storks, um, <laughs> the, the the antique, the license plates, the the random shelf outside. Uh, it's just it's it's a plethora of of oddities, and none <laughs> of it makes any sense. It really is. It's almost like somebody had uh, ADHD when they come up with this. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It just means that it's like me. They can't focus on one thing. You know, they, you got you got so much stuff going on here. You know, you got pottery, furniture, glassware, babies. We don't know if they sold babies. We don't we don't know what's going on here. Uh, but very unique. Like I say, it's it's definitely. It caught my eye. It made me pull off to the side of the road, get out of the vehicle, and shoot this with a wide-angle lens because I wanted to get everything in it. Uh, over to the right there, you can see a little building, which I'll show you what was on that building in just a minute. Uh, but this image here, this is probably one of my favorite locations that I found over in uh, Stanley. Uh, it doesn't have a... Uh, of course it's got the caution signs and everything, but it, you know, I'm not saying you can go in it, but you can drive down the road that is you can park and shoot this same angle, which I thought was pretty cool because it's so rustic and grungy. It had to be black and white and it had to be HDR. Yeah. So that combination, what do you think, Luke? Uh, you know, it makes me want to go inside uh, and, and see more of it. Exactly. Uh, I've, I feel the same way. Maybe there's a way we can get a, a tour. But this is what is on the right side of that uh, antique store, just nailed up there. So if anybody out there is watching this video, I'm not sure exactly what grill this is, but if you can name the grill or the vehicle that this grill came off of, leave it in the comments and we'll get you a, a copy of this print and we'll get it to you. What do you think about that, Luke? That'll work. So it's almost like a contest, but you it wouldn't is. know it's a contest unless you watch the video, right? There you go. But uh, what do you think about something like this, Luke? You know, it, it, it's interesting. It's art. You know what I'm saying? Some people they just think it's just garbage on the side of the road, you know? Um, but I, it's 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 like those people, in, I don't know what TV show it was, but there's, there's like a, a couch. Uh, the, they took the, the back of a truck and turned it into like a couch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's repurposed art, if you will. You know, I like that. It really is. And, and like you said, it was probably hanging out back somewhere. And somebody said, you know, let's put a couple nails in it and staple it up to the wall here and make it look nice, you know. And it, is got a, it does have a little angle to it, which I thought was pretty cool. You know, it's just like they, they try to put it up there by themselves or something. You yeah, know? yeah. All right. Next three images. Of course, the one in the middle is the, the same warehouse, which I shot it almost a vertical panoramic. Uh, the tower over to the right there is across the street from the same warehouse, which I thought was pretty cool. What I couldn't get is on the very top, there was about six or seven buzzards, huge buzzards. But from that angle, I couldn't get them because they wouldn't come to that side or they wouldn't fly away. They were just kind of yeah. out up there. I did get another image with them in it. But of course, you know, they were so far away. You know, I shot that with uh, the 50 millimeter lens. So the, uh, the effect that HDR has in, in between each line, uh, yeah. it almost looks like stained glass. Yes. And I, I didn't change that. I, I wanted to leave that because I looked at it and I was like, well, that doesn't look real. But that's kind of the point. You know, HDR is almost uh, too real. It's unrealistic, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then of course the old jars, they were in a basket sitting out by the old house. So all these kind of tie in together. It's just the way I put them in the slideshow is not, you know, it's meant to be separated a little bit that way they have tell their own story, you know? And of course this is at the antique store too, over to the right side of the grill. And I call these redneck wind chimes. What do you think? <laughs> It'll work. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, again, somebody's creativity with some junk that's kind of laying around that other people think is junk uh, can be converted into artistic uh, wind chimes, you know. Mm -hmm. And, of course, this is at the old warehouse as well. I love these. Uh, they were bright red, too. I've got a couple of them in color, of course, that I kept. But the two bright red uh, valves 
And then of course the danger sign is what led me to take this picture. And I kind of made everything way a little bit to the left because there's nothing really on the right, except for that little shrub over there on the ground. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it was, it was just screaming for a black and white HDR. So. Okay, Luke. So that's it for the slideshow. So overall, how do you feel about in the future doing more HDR black and white conversions? You know, I, I would definitely try it again. Um, there's probably even more pictures. I mean, we all have hundreds and thousands of pictures hidden away. Just going back and just, just fooling around with them. You know what I'm saying? Just, just to experiment with them. But also going forward, shooting with the intention of turning them into a black and white HDR. And seeing that potential in the image as well. Luke, now that everybody out there knows that Snapsea can save that look, it's easy to, to recreate the HDR black and white mm -hmm. on any image you take, especially with your cell phone. Uh, or you can convert it in, you know, if you have a, a Wi-Fi camera like the Sony a6000 I shoot with, shoot it with the long lens, bring it into the, the phone via Wi-Fi, put it on the Snapseed, hit one button, and it's done. You know, you may want to adjust a little brightness, a little contrast, but otherwise, I mean, you can see it instantly, like within 30 seconds, yeah. how that's going to look. And you can post straight to Instagram. And it's not as fun if you use an Instagram filter. I know a lot of people do. They'll just shoot it raw, hit it with the Instagram, and then change the filter. But this is being a little bit more creative, I think, and using your own adjustments. Um, but definitely, you know, I, I would, I always look for that conversion to whether it be, uh, HDR or black and white. Um, but that's just my style. You know, I, mm. I think we're all getting into our own little niche and we find things that we like, like that driftwood dude, I've got to go to that Jekyll Island place or what it's Jekyll Island, right? Je Jekyll Island. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because driftwood's just amazing. I mean, it, just so much detail and that in, HDR in, brings it out. Definitely. And, and you can probably go three, four times and see a hundred different things each time, just because you looked a different way. You know what I'm saying? That's true. It is, and, it's long. I, we, we, we probably explored maybe 20% of the, of the whole beach. Yeah. And uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, uh, Luke, you want to give a plug to your Instagram and let them take a look at that uh, picture that you posted for Jekyll Island on there as well this week. That yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Uh, you can actually put it in the, the, the thing too somewhere over here. Uh, just, it's just, Luke's point, on, just point up right this. Luke's underscore lens underscore. Very good. So uh, next thing we want to discuss is we had our guest on last episode, Robert Guti. Uh, Robert is a photographer from Mooresville, and he introduced Luke to extension tubes. So Luke, yes. give us a little bit of uh, experience that you had with those the past couple of weeks. Uh, so I shot a few things with it, um, and we there a few of them are on my Instagram as well, but I got these. Just shoot is a simple brand. Uh, it's a 12 millimeter. Can you see that? Yep. That's good right there. Yep. 12, 30. 20 and 35, and 36. 36. Okay. Yeah. Um, and basically there's no glass and like, like Robert said, they're just straight, straight through. The only thing I've, I've noticed is I had to clean them out when I got them. They're a little dusty. Yeah. Uh, cause the, 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 they'll go right on your camera. And you put your lens onto it. Uh, you don't want any dust in there, but so once I clean them out, uh, they, I mean, they're auto focused. They have the the sensors. Yeah. Um, they they were great. When you have all three of them on, though, I noticed I was getting vignetting, just a slight vignette on the outside curve. But other than that, they were impressive. I actually kind of liked them. Um, they were like thirty seven dollars, I think, on Amazon. Um, there's a ton of different versions of them, but they're all basically the same. Same uh, millimeters, 12, uh, 20, and 36. But for 40 bucks, I'm telling you, it's it's a whole different world to experience with your camera. Yeah, that's true. And uh, like we were discussing before, you know, it's cheaper than buying a macro lens that's yes. made for the close-up focus. Um, and, and all it does is it puts space between your sensor and the lens and, and just makes your focus a little bit narrower, I guess. Uh, but Luke does have some images that he had uh, posted on Instagram, of course, that you can go take a look at. But uh, I know you got to find a spot, like you said, like uh, a flower garden or something that like Robert said, you know, you go out on a nature walk. I mean, you got to really start looking for things to shoot because it's not just like not everything is going to look good 
shot like that. It has to show a lot of detail. It has to be a different perspective that people don't see normally. Wouldn't you agree? A hundred percent. You know, and, and I would suggest um, a tripod or a monopod. Uh, it sucks to shoot freehand because it's rough. I don't yeah, care just, how good you are. <laughs> so like a, a small millimeter away changes the focus of the whole picture, mm-hmm. you know? And if the wind blows, guess what? You got to wait. <laughs> you got to wait. <laughs> uh, but Luke, thanks for sharing that with us. And like I say, if you guys have experienced extension tubes or have shot some macro shots, send them to us. Let us take a look at them. We'd love to see them. Uh, we'll have a link to our website, of course, in our description, in our video. So you guys can email that to us. So Luke, the last thing we want to discuss is the commercial shoot that I did for a salesman at Mazda Toyota of Gastonia. This you did what? Night. Yes. So if you guys haven't checked it out yet, we have on our The Next Shot photo and video show on YouTube, I've got a behind the scenes, which Luke, I, I know you've you've took a look at it, but you weren't sure of exactly what we were doing. But we did nope. uh, a commercial that we shot with strictly the iPhone and a wireless mic set up uh, at the Mazda dealership. So Ruben contacted me and said, Hey man, you know, I'd like to make a, a promo commercial for, to help my car sales. You know, he's, he's fairly new at selling cars there. And I said, here's what we'll do. We'll write a little script. We'll tie it in with the Ruben sandwich. And we're going to do a shoot. I said, you just need to nail down the day. Okay. So for anybody out there that's getting into video, the easiest way to do it is to find something that somebody needs and do it right luke you know I, i'm not gonna lie to you after watching your video and your commercial i kind of want to learn how to shoot video a little bit i'm telling you man and, and it's the same on the dslr as it is on the iphone the reason i shot on the iphone for one mobility so a couple of things that i learned while shooting this commercial one is i shot with the iphone because it's mobile okay it does burn up space because we shot it at 4k 30 frames per second, which is good for quality. But had I had I thought about it beforehand, I would have did that 1080 if it was just going to YouTube, not being on a big screen TV. 1080 saves your space. Still keep the good quality. Uh, I use the wireless microphone. It has a, a transmitter and a receiver so that there's no wires between the phone and him. Okay, you can still use a wired lapel mic, which it just was a little lapel mic that we put on. But... Uh, Another thing that I learned doing this is that you have to have a script. You have to have a checklist and you need an assistant. Uh, I learned the hard way that trying to do the behind the scenes and also shooting the commercial and doing a little interview with him. uh, You know, I had to do a little bit of reading. I had to do a little bit of uh, showing him which way to point, how to do things, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, those are things you learn. And this is the second commercial that I did. I did another one for real estate. But on my third one, I'm, I'm definitely going to have those things. I'm going to have the wireless mic. I'm going to have more space on the iPhone or a backup uh, to shoot more video. And you also have to have an assistant. So, Luke, <laughs> Luke, you're always welcome to be my assistant. You just got to drive up here or I have to drive down there and we're going to knock it out. So Make it happen. Guys, if you are interested in doing videos and – commercial work or if you have questions send us some questions and we'll answer them for you look we got to get you more into video i'm telling you yes this slow-mo video and just the promo stuff that we're going to be working on soon this year uh we definitely need to to make sure you're ready for the video conversion i'm a video virgin <laughs> it's okay we're gonna take care of that sir uh the first thing you've got to do is you've got to have a an idea that's for everybody out there. Have an idea. If you love cars, okay, you've got to you got to find somebody with a nice car and you got to video that thing like it's going out of style. Ten seconds, ten seconds, ten seconds. Do some slow mo. Do some pans. Do some. Have them drive the car up and down the road. You know, put some time into what you love. And if even if you love photography, you know, we are look. We are going to have a Peter McKinnon Appreciation Day or episode that we do nothing but discuss the things that this guy inspires us to do. 
or or uh just just giving him praise you know for the things that he does to help other photographers uh and and have an insight on what it's like to be him what do you think i'm down for that so that's it guys we are having a peter mckinnon if you don't know who this guy is youtube peter mckinnon go from there start from there uh, i think he started making videos three four years ago maybe uh r- r- roughly that area yeah, yeah. Uh, so every video I've watched, even the silly ones that he does, uh, I love it. You know, it's, it's almost like an inspiration to my day, uh, daily dose of Peter McKinnon, you know? Uh, so definitely go check that out guys. And he's on Instagram. And of course, uh, I think he's got a couple other platforms that he's done with, uh, Maddie on the podcast and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's almost like, uh, it's me and Luke, you know, at a different level, we'll, we'll get there. Right. Luke. We will We will. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's it for this episode. So stay tuned for what we have coming in the next few weeks. Look, we've got to get together. That way we can collaborate on something very soon. Um, yes. But otherwise, how do you think this episode went today? You know, uh, it went great as always. Uh, I think people should like it, subscribe to it, and click that damn bell. This is true because we're going to be posting a lot more stuff. Yeah, I, I'm I'm going to get Luke into this video thing, and we're going to – it may not be vlogs. It may not be – uh shows like this one it may be shorter versions we may be doing some uh, some different edits and stuff like that so again guys just make sure you like subscribe comment participate email us if you got questions right luke just send it to us anything anything please. <laughs> anything <laughs> partake in the festivities yes uh we're here for you guys you know and that's the thing we have fun making these uh these episodes and we hope you guys enjoy watching them as well and share it with friends and family other photographers you know if uh, of course if you want to be a guest on our show or you want to submit some images definitely do that as well but uh luke that's it for us today and uh, guys out there until next time keep shooting see you next time Me do my two-step.